Hi, this is Shannon Shofi, and I'm the Parent Liaison at West Fannin. I wanted to give you all some information about milestones that's coming up, and this is for third, fourth, and fifth grade parents and students. So let's get started. All right, the purpose of Georgia Milestone Assessment is to provide information to the state to let them know how well students are mastering the Georgia Standards of Excellence. It also lets students know about their own learning and how ready they are for the next grade level. Parents, it lets you guys know about your child's learning and progression. And then it gives us information to let us know if we need to improve. It lets us know our strengths and weaknesses. This is a great little video. Let's take a look at it. Georgia students, parents, and educators have big goals, and now they have a tool to help them navigate their way. The Georgia Milestones Assessment System. Georgia Milestones provides a clear signal of students' academic performance, including how well they're prepared for what's next, whether that's the next grade, next course, or starting college or a career. Think of Georgia Milestones as a map. It provides information on students' academic journeys, including how well they've mastered the content and skills at each grade or milestone. Georgia Milestones is developed and owned by Georgia and created in partnership with Georgia educators, colleges, universities, and businesses. Old methods of standardized testing are on the way out. Georgia Milestones provides an engaging, innovative testing experience. Students will take tests online, leveraging the power of computers and tablets. Students will still see multiple choice questions, but they will also encounter other questions where they'll be required to demonstrate what they know and can do. Constructed response questions will require students to create an answer rather than select one. Extended response questions will have multiple parts, requiring students to demonstrate a deeper level of understanding and reasoning. Students will interact with technology-enhanced questions. This could involve shading an object, editing text, or classifying items. These questions are more engaging and give students a better opportunity to demonstrate what they've learned. Georgia Milestones includes end-of-grade assessments in grades 3 through 8 and end-of-course assessments in high school. Content areas include English Language Arts, Mathematics, Science, and Social Studies. Results will provide critical information on overall student performance and specific data on skills like reading and writing. Students will receive Lexile scores, which help match students' reading skill with appropriate reading materials. Georgia Milestones will also provide norm reference scores, which tell students how they achieved relative to students across the country. Parents will see how well their student has mastered state academic standards and how prepared he or she is for the next educational level. Teachers will have actionable information for remediation and enrichment efforts. And schools can use this information to identify program strengths and weaknesses. It's amazing how far good information can take us. Georgia Milestones is an innovative assessment program that will help us reach our ultimate goal, successful Georgia graduates ready to embark on their next journey in life. For more information, visit us at testing.gadoe.org. That video has some great information in it. Let you see how different things are right now with testing. It's not the same way that we had tests with just multiple choice. All right, they talked in the video about end of grade, and that's exactly what we're going to be doing is end of grade assessment. So three through eight does end of grade. Third, fourth, and fifth grade will all take ELA and math, and then only fifth grade will take science. 
I put end of course assessments in here so you guys could see at the high school level what they're taking end of course assessments in, or at least the subject areas that they're doing right now. That can change. They do add and subtract from this end of course assessment. West Phoenix testing window will be starting on Tuesday, April 27th, so not a long way from now. Third, fourth, and fifth grade will be taking ELA section one on the 27th. Section two will be on the 28th. Section three will be on the 29th. We typically do not like to test on Mondays, so we'll start again on Tuesday, May 4th with math in section one, and then Wednesday, May 5th, math in section two. And our last day of testing will be Thursday, May 6th with only fifth grade science. So that's our testing window. I'm going to show you the student data report that you will receive, and this shows overall how your student did on the milestones test. The content area shows you the subjects that they will be testing in. Of course, none of us will have social studies on our individual student report, but you will have ELA and math for everyone, and then if you have a fifth grade student, you will see science. This tells you their level that they tested, their achievement level. I'm going to actually skip a slide over so I can show you the achievement levels. So if you only have one bar, it shows you that they did not demonstrate proficiency in that subject area, and they need substantial academic support. If there's two bars, they have partial proficiency proficiency and they need some additional academic support. There's three bars, they are proficient in that subject area and they're prepared for the next grade level. And if there's four bars, of course it's advanced and they're well prepared. So we'll go back to that first slide and that's what those bars show are those achievement levels for each of the content areas that they tested in. Page three, page two is blank, so page three is all about English language arts, and it gives us a summary of your student's achievement in ELA. The first thing I'm going to show you up here, there's their scores right here, their scale score, and then this category shows how they did in writing. So you can see here on the right-hand side that in this example, idea development, organization, and coherence in their extended writing summary, they had a four out of four. Now that could say one out of four, two out of four, and like this one, three out of three, but it'll tell you here how they did on their writing. This is a comparison to the, the school, the system, and the state, so it lets you know where your, where your student lies in comparison with those. National percentile is down here, and then your student's Lexile information is here. They give you their measure and then their range and they also give you titles of books to let you know what you could do like su suggested titles that you could pick out for your child to read and they give you motivating or challenging um, titles as well that part has kind of been cut off here at the bottom but there is a section down there showing um, challenging if you want to challenge your child a little more these would be great books of course you need to make sure that they're age appropriate <laughs> All right, page four through six. None of you will have page six because we don't have social studies, but page four will be math, and then it'll give you their achievement level in math. This is the domain category, and in the domain category, it'll tell you what they tested on. Like, for example, if you're doing math, because that's what everyone will have and see, it might show you how the breakdown they did in geometry. Or if, in, if they did fifth grade science, it might show you cells. So it'll show you each domain category and how their performance was in each of those categories. Same thing down here as the ELA. It's going to compare the student to the school, the system, and the state. And then it's going to give the national percentile and the percentile range. All right, all of these links will be available to you. I'm not going to go through each one and click on them. In the description of the YouTube video, there will be a link to this presentation and you can go to that and go to all these links. The most important link that I want to tell you about is probably the practice test. 
This lets you experience the online testing. And there's a lot of things students can do in this test. I mean, they can cut, copy, paste, highlight, redo. So I encourage you as parents and as students, now they have gone in here and practiced it here. But as a parent, I would go in with my child and go through this practice test so you can see um, what they're doing and what the test is like as well. So definitely this is a big one. Lexile Parent Resources, this gives you information on Lexile. That's a good one as well. And then that student report that I just went through with you about how to read how they did, that, this is a, your guide to that. So let's say next, um, usually you get your parent guide, your overall student report in the progress report of the next year. That's what we've done in the past. I can't say that that's what we're going to do this time, but that'll be a ways away for you. So if you don't remember all those things I just talked about, you can go to this link and it'll tell you how to read that. And then there's more resources for you guys. All right, these are important things to remember for, for testing. Attendance, of course, arrive to school on time the day of testing. You don't want to start out behind or feel rushed. Also, if you could try to avoid any early dismissals on testing days, we don't want them worried about, oh, I got to go to the doctor, I got to go to the dentist. So if you could rearrange those so they're not on those days that I gave you earlier, that would be awesome. Develop a relaxing routine. Study time, study space, time for food, time to sleep. That's important um, with not just testing, but all around homework, anything. We're gonna make sure here that they have a good space to be able to take this test. Also prepare your mind, body, and spirit. Exercise is always important, it makes you feel better. Dress in layers, our heat and air goes on and off, so make sure they have something they can put on and take off. Eat a healthy breakfast. You can eat before you come to school or we provide free breakfast every morning. They can eat too if they would like at home and here. And then some relaxation techniques. Me and Miss Odom did a YouTube video on stress management that you can find under the same parent tutorial playlist and you can click on that and it gives you a lot of relaxation techniques. Talk and think positively. I'm smart enough to pass the test. You're going to do their best. Our PTO provides gum and mints to all the students and when we do that we also give them a little positive affirmation whether it be a card or a sticker just to just to reinforce that um, smart enough and they're going to do their best and think positively practice to make progress the best thing i can tell you for practice right now would be to go to that testing that simulated testing link that i gave you i think that's probably the most important if you do see an area that your student needs extra help in and you want to work on that between now and when milestones start you can um, get that study guide that i gave you there's links that that you can study or um, you can talk to your child's teacher and they can send home anything extra that you need Okay, I hope that you were able to learn a few things about milestones. If you have any questions about milestones, please reach out to me at West Fannin. Thank you very much.